Hi guys, I'm not going to waste any time with an intro on today's video because I think it's pretty clear what we're going to be talking about. So many of you in the comments here on YouTube and across all the other Sharkbite socials have asked me about the recent Hedera shark attack and it's another pretty distressing one to be honest. I'm sure most of you will have heard about it already or unfortunately seen the video that's doing the rounds on social media at the moment but for those of you that haven't I'll break it down really quickly for you and then a bit later on we'll get to the bottom of how and why this incident happened in the first place and you'll get my thoughts on Hedera. Now for those of you that know the channel quite well you'll know that I only tend to cover shark attacks when I feel there's something important to say. And for this specific incident here and Hedera as a whole, there's definitely a few important things to say about it. Right then, let's have a look what happened. So last week, a video started circulating across social media showing a man who looked to be about 30 yards offshore being attacked by at least one, if not multiple sharks. Like on most occasions here on Shark Bites, I won't be showing you the video clip out of respect for the family, but I will show you some screenshots to help you try and understand it a bit better. So the man in question can be seen thrashing around in the water with blood clearly visible in the video, as well as shark dorsal fins and caudal fins. Knowing the area and looking at the footage, we can almost with 100% certainty say that the sharks responsible were either sandbar sharks or dusky sharks. And from the footage, I'd say that between those two, it looks like a dusky to me. The video itself is another really grim one though, guys. I'd say it's probably best to avoid it altogether, to be honest. There's multiple angles of the incident, mostly taken by onlookers from the beach, or as you can see in this one here, from Orup Rabin Power Station, which overlooks the popular Olga and Boitel Beach. At the time, just after the incident, the man disappeared below the waves and was officially classed as missing, although after a search and rescue team headed out into the area, they were eventually able to find some partial remains, of which were genetically analysed recently and determined to be that of Barak Tzak, a 40-year-old father and Israeli citizen. Barak was said to be a keen ocean and shark enthusiast who enjoyed snorkelling and regularly visited that specific area for a swim after work. Now, fatal Mediterranean shark attacks like this one are really, really rare, so it's actually garnered a lot of attention online because it's a particularly high-profile incident. And as such, there were and still are a load of rumours circulating across the internet about the circumstances which led to Barak being killed by these sharks. The main one of which was that he was spearfishing or had fish on his person when he was attacked. So first off, yes, in many shark attack cases, people are often spearfishing which can attract sharks and cause behavioural changes that lead to them biting humans. Or in other cases where people have tried to feed fish to sharks, they've been bitten as a result of it. These are the provoked incidents where the snorkeler or the swimmer in question was performing an activity which potentially led to the bite. I think the reason why so many people jumped to this conclusion for this case was because in the few days before Barak was killed and just after, videos and pictures were circulating online of people interacting with sharks on Bay at Yenai Beach, which is about 20 minutes further down the coast. When I say interacting, they were basically throwing dead fish out into the water and the sharks were coming and eating those fish. More on those fish later, by the way. But there were also some local idiots online uploading videos like this one where they were trying to grab these sharks while they were in the water. It is baffling that people are still to the this day interacting with sharks like that. I also just want to give a quick shout out here to one of the Shark Bite subscribers who worked for the Israeli Shark Association and actually called this a few months back. Absolutely a disaster in the making. Anyway, this was happening a couple of days before and the day after the incident with Barak on Boitel slash Olga Beach. So you can see why a lot of people online might have originally presumed that Barak was doing the same because of that close proximity in time. In the end, we eventually did get some more information about the incident from a fisherman who was pretty close to the attack and then some more info from Barak's wife, both of whom said that he entered the water with just his fin, snorkel and a GoPro and there was no evidence out there that he was spearfishing or that he brought fish into the water with him. He just wanted to go out and film the sharks. So I think on this one here, we can't entirely place the blame on Barak because he wasn't doing anything that was really provoking the sharks. That doesn't mean he's not responsible at all for what happened here, by the way. He's put himself in a situation that is inherently dangerous. Whether he knew that beforehand or not is up for debate, but there's no concrete evidence that he provoked this incident. So what's actually gone on here then? Well, we first got to have a look at the area itself to figure out a little bit of context. The attack itself took place about 30 yards off Boitel Beach, a popular swimming spot in northern Israel, which sits in the southeast corner of the Mediterranean. Boitel Beach is a stone's throw away from Orit Rabin Power Plant, which is Israel's largest power station. As part of the operation of the power station, Orit Rabin pumps seawater into the plant to cool down its turbines before pumping that now warmer water back into the ocean. You can see and hear that water being pumped here in one of the video clips of the incident, and and you can more clearly see it just here in this shot of the plant itself. So pumping that water back into the ocean means that the water temperature around the power plant and the nearby beaches is considerably warmer than anywhere else. It's about 10 degrees or 18 degrees Fahrenheit warmer, which is a big jump. And warm water is an absolute haven for sharks. In this case, it's sandbar and dusky sharks. The warmer waters here create an optimal or even higher metabolic rate in these sharks, and it's thought to somewhat facilitate reproduction for the females. Basically, for dusky sharks and sandbar 
sharks, warmer water is exactly where you want to be. And so it's meant that for many years now, the water surrounding Orit Rabin Power Station and the nearby beaches have been a bit of a winter haven for these shark species. Between November and May, the sharks will hang around the power station because conditions there are just ideal for them compared to the colder, deeper waters offshore. And then as you move into summer from June onwards, the sharks will head out off into the Mediterranean as it warms up, and then they'll come back again when it cools down towards the winter. The Hedera Power Station sharks, though, have been a pretty popular tourist attraction now for quite some time. The station itself was built in the mid-1970s and became fully operational in the mid-80s, and the sharks first showed up about 20 years later in the early 2000s. So they've been coming back year after year for the best part of the last 25 years. And since 2017, they've been extensively studied and researched by local scientists working in the area from a behavior, conservation, and tourism perspective. Just as a quick side note, I think it's a really fascinating case study here where you've got this super anthropogenically built up area with that power station that's actually ended up facilitating the growth of a mixed shark species population. Normally, when we look at anthropogenic impacts on sharks, it's negative. But here in Hedera, the building of a power station has actually ended up increasing shark biodiversity. It's the opposite of what you might expect to happen. Anyway, that's a bit of a sidetrack. What we know here for sure is that this is a particularly sharky hotspot in the winter months. And the scientists that have been working on the sharks here actually recommended in 2020 that people steer clear of the area. The scientists at the time were actually listened to by the local authorities who reportedly listed the power plant and the nearby river as a restricted swimming area again back in 2020. Now, despite the sharks being there for over two decades and there being lots and lots of snorkelers and swimmers, there had been no fatalities. There was an incident in 2019 where a snorkeler had his fin bitten off by one of the sharks and then this one here, again filmed in 2019 by Haim Shafir, where a snorkeler had a very close encounter with a dusky shark, nearly copping a bite to the upper leg. Looking at some of those clips though, we can see here there's a few factors that can easily increase your chances of being bitten by some of these sharks. And the first and perhaps most visual one is water visibility. From several of the clips of the sharks and snorkelers in the area from above, we can see that the viz is really poor. You're probably looking at a maximum horizontal visibility there of three or four feet max. And when you're in murky water, the chances of some of these sharks coming in for an exploratory bite on your fin or your leg are relatively high. The next one is one that you might not necessarily be able to see, but it's still a really important one, and that's currents. Locals from the area have regularly reported strong currents here, originating from that water exchange system at the power plant and the nearby river, otherwise known as the Hedera Stream, that flows out just to the side of the power plant. These currents in the river can transport various bits of runoff from the land, but also fish from the river out into the estuary, right into the path of the shark. Not only that though, as a snorkeler or a swimmer moving around in this area, you can get swept out from the shallow inshore waters to the relatively deep waters very quickly. If I just loop this clip here, which is one of the videos of Barak being attacked, you can see those currents at play. This line of water here is showing you just how strong that is. And right here, this is where Barak is being attacked by the shark or sharks. He's way offshore here, at least 30 yards out, I'd say, significantly further than any of the other videos we see of tourists swimming around with these sharks. And I'm wondering if those strong currents currents are the reason why he's out this far. But again, if we look at these two things in isolation, water visibility and currents, they don't really explain why he was attacked in this specific incident. And that likely comes down to some extenuating environmental factors. In the week leading up to this particular incident, Hadira and the surrounding areas had some fairly high temperatures for the time of year. A couple of daytime highs of 32 degrees Celsius warmed the river waters up, depleting it of oxygen. And then this paired with a few separate sewage runoffs into those rivers caused a mass die off of fish. Those dead fish, some of which you can see photographed here in Hadera Stream on the 20th of April, the day before the incident, ended up washing out into the sea with those currents. And those dead fish would have been fed on by the Hadera sharks. And if there was enough of them, it could have caused an increase in aggression or perhaps a behavioral switch to serious hunting mode. At the same time, you've got warm water from that power plant that's warmed up even more because of the hotter temperatures. So shark metabolism goes up and they need to eat more food. Then we throw our last piece of the puzzle into the mix, Barak, who's possibly been pushed out to deeper waters in those currents and he's also holding in his hands a device that's producing an electrical signal similar to that of a dying fish in murky waters, all of that could be enough to send one shark in for an exploratory bite. And with all those things combining together, you've got a frenzy event there where one or multiple sharks are all biting down on something that they think might be a prey item. Barak's been caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, and unfortunately he's lost his life as a result of it. Dusky sharks can get to decent sizes. You've seen the size of some of them in the clips that I've shown you today, but they can come in anywhere from six to nine feet long. And a shark that size can and will do some serious damage to your body if it bites you. Normally dusky sharks aren't really high on the list for attacks on 
humans. They've been listed only a couple of times in the past, so they're not really considered to be a major threat for swimmers and snorkelers. But it just shows you that if you get a shark like this that's big enough and bold enough, and then you throw in those conditions that increase the likelihood of a bite, that shark can end up killing you. I think if I was looking at this as a whole, the biggest factor here for me in why this happened was the estuary. If you live in a place where large shark species are present, do not swim near estuaries. It's a really important safety precaution that you can take when you go into the sea to not get bitten by a shark. You just can't factor what's happening in the water when you're in or near an estuary. There's the currents, the runoff from the land, dead fish or other animals, most of which you're not going to notice at first glance. And if you head into sharky waters by an estuary, you are massively increasing your chances of getting bitten. Massively. I imagine Hadera and those beaches nearby are going to be pretty heavily scrutinized now by those local authorities, and I expect some legal changes to come as well. My thoughts, of course, go out to Barak's family. It's going to be a really distressing time for all of them right now, especially considering how high profile this incident was and the fact there's footage of it online. But I'll always remind people if you're wanting to spend time in the water with these animals, like Barak was, you've got to do it with caution. Read up about the safety precautions you can take. Don't swim alone. Don't swim near estuaries. All of these things can save your life. What'd you make of this one then, guys? Do you agree or disagree with some of my thoughts? Make sure you let me know in the comments. But if you're after some more advice and analysis of situations where there have been shark bites or shark attacks, then you might quite enjoy this video right here. In it are some crazy shark encounters, including that one in the Maldives where the diver nearly lost their head to a massive tiger shark. So make sure you give it a watch here.